Greetings. Here I am again with my B paper and my inexpensive pens. I'm going to draw a little picture with my 0.5 pen on this plate surface Bristol paper, which I like quite a bit. There are many old stories about Malibu. Many old stories that I would hear people tell, whether they were true or not. I don't know. But this may be one of those stories. Maybe it's true. Maybe it isn't. Maybe some of the things I remember are real, and maybe they're just conglomerations of different images from my mind, different stories that I had heard over the years, put together in some broken, fractitious conglomeration in an attempt for the mosaic to make some kind of sense. I don't know. But this is my story, and it's the story I'm going to tell. Once there was a little cabin. It sat at the end of a large parking lot. It was next to the creek. Our house sat on a bluff on the opposite side of the canyon. We could see the ocean. We could see the little creek, and there sat the little cabin. Back away from the waves, away from the water, up toward the mountain at the base of the foothill. The little cabin was oddly asymmetric. It had once been painted white, but the paint had long chipped off and become weather-beaten from years in the sun and the abuse from the constant wind blowing off the ocean, and it had weathered it down to a silvery, shimmering gray. The old building sat as nobly as any old shed could. It always looked like it was not much more than just a utility building to me, but inside of that building lived an old man. I only knew him as a beachcomber. He had a dog, and every day he would go out with his dog and wander the beaches, and he would come back with glass bottles or, or uh, pieces of rope, driftwood, that he would then place around the perimeter of his yard in front of his house. On the roof of the house was this odd box, and I could only assume it was a water tank. All of my life I had uh, seen buildings like this garages or work sheds that had a, a water tank on the roof and just thought it was another structure like that. The old clapboard building wasn't very wide and it uh, wasn't terribly long. It was a very small little building and the old man would sit on the steps in front of the building with the front and back doors open and he would sit there and smoke cigarettes and he would uh, just look out at the beach, staring at the ocean. The building had vents in the roof that were covered with a very heavy kind of a metal screen, and I had seen the screen used in some mining operations where it would be holding up gravel or retaining wall of some kind. He also had strips of it placed over the windows. The windows didn't open, and I guess the screen was just there to deter people from breaking the window and trying to crawl in. And I remember one time I snuck up to the back door and peered through the building while he sat smoking his cigarettes. I could see his back facing me. And through the building I marveled that it was not really anything more than two small rooms. There was a, a bed, very narrow bed, underneath the window on one side. And then on the other side of the door stretched a workbench from one end of the building all the way to the other. On top of it was all manner of broken pieces of bottles and glasses and pieces of wire and old tools. There was some large machine tool of some kind sitting up on a, sitting up on a pedestal that was reinforced underneath with large wooden blocks. The whole building smelled of heavy grease like the kind my grandfather used to use on his tractor. The old man would sit in front of his house with his dog chained up on a long chain. And the dog would run back and forth barking most of the day, and it would drag that chain across the dirt until there was nothing there but gravel and dust. In the winter time, when it would rain, it was just a big mud puddle. But along the edge of the perimeter of the farthest point the chain would reach would be this beautiful fence made out of driftwood and 
pieces of netting and uh, fishing line and stones with fossils embedded glass bottles and it was it was actually it was actually very attractive one day I was walking in front of his house and he told me get away boy my dog bite you and I never went close to his cabin ever again I was a uh, I was afraid of him. He seemed like a nutty old fellow. And one day, I asked Dr. Kirby about it. I said, who is that guy? And whether or not it was true or whether it was just a fascinating story for a young boy to hear, Dr. Kirby told me the tale of this man who had once been a foreman for May Ringe, the Ringe estate. He had been working at the quartz mine, which actually wasn't too far from where our house was. The chaparral had claimed most of the equipment, but some of it could still be there, and sometimes I would go down there with friends and we'd play on it. And then finally one year there was a big fire, and the equipment got, got uh, all twisted and ruined in the flames, and they towed it out and dragged it away. But that would be a story for another time. But Dr. Kirby told me a story about the old man and how he had uh, worked his life, his whole life, for the Ringe estate working as a guard and as a foreman on different projects. And when he became too old to work anymore, she deeded him the cabin on a 99-year lease for $1 as payment for all of his service to the family and to the property over the years. And he lived in that cabin, staring out at the beach. And if that was the truth, I wouldn't know it wasn't. One night, my father and I were sitting watching television, and I saw a strange flash and then some orange light, and I got up and went to the window to go and see what it was, and the little cabin had burst into flames. My father came running over, and he called for my mother, who got on the phone and called uh, for the fire department. She came over to me, and she pulled me away from the window as I stood there watching the flames bursting out from the windows and the doors. She made me go to my room. The next morning, the cabin was gone. I marveled that the trees that had been around the cabin never caught fire and burned to the ground. My mother had told me that apparently the old man had gone to bed and was smoking a cigarette when he fell asleep. It didn't surprise me that the cabin might burst into flames like that, with all the tool grease and the smell of acetone and other cleaning fluids. But the house was gone, and any memory of the man or the cabin I could never find. I tried to find an article about it in Malibu Times, and I never saw anything about it again. No one ever talked about him, and sometimes I wonder if I just made it all up. But I do know that I saw a cabin. I do remember the night it burned down. And I do also remember seeing kids that would collect there, waiting for the school bus under the trees which still stand behind the supermarket. And I always wondered if they knew about the old man and his cabin and the amazing wall that went around the perimeter of his property with smooth driftwood and multicolored bottles and pieces of metal and amazing stones with ancient sea creatures embedded into them. It's hard to know whether the jigsaw puzzle of my memory actually adds up to this picture. But if these are the only memories that we have of him, at least I have these.